this video, we're going to talk about how to write an argument summary. So one of the tasks that I'm going to ask you to do over and over again in this class is to write summaries of the arguments that we look at. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through the process of summarizing arguments so you have some idea of what it is I'm asking you to do. Now, there are other ways to summarize arguments, so please don't take this video as the final word on the topic. And I'm certainly not trying to present uh, the only possible way to do this. Um, instead, the purpose of this video is to give you some place to start to learn the process of summarizing arguments. So to begin, we'll look at Anselm's ontological argument, the first argument we looked at this week. The first premise, God is something in which nothing greater can be conceived. Second, when we understand something, that thing exists in our understanding. So, God is something in which nothing greater can be conceived, exists in our understanding. But, if God really is something in which nothing greater can be conceived, then God must not only exist in our understanding, but he must also exist in reality, because if God didn't also exist in reality, there'd be something greater, namely, the being that existed both in our understanding and in reality. And this, of course, is a contradiction. So, God exists both in our understanding and in reality. All right, so this is Anselm's ontological argument, and this is what we'll start with. So, what is it that I'm trying to do when I'm summarizing the argument? Well, remember to begin with the principle of charity. We learned about the principle of charity last week. And when you apply the principle of charity, what you want to do is summarize the argument and present it in its clearest and strongest possible form. Now, the summary isn't the time to start pointing out your objections. We're going to have a chance to do that later. When you summarize an argument, you want to present it in the clearest and best way possible. You also want to write your summary in such a way that anyone reading it can understand the argument. So, how do we start? Well, here's a few different possible ways you might start, and there's any number of other ways. You might start by saying, Anselm's ontological argument has five premises. Or, St. Anselm be begins his ontological argument with the claim that. Or, the first premise of Anselm's ontological argument is. You can really start any way, as long as what you're trying to do is directly work towards the goal of summarizing the argument. Now, here's a way, a few ways not to begin. I don't want you to begin your summary using unnecessary flowery la language or a bunch of extra junk. So, for example, I don't want you to say things like, Since the dawn of humankind, people have wondered if we're alone in the universe. St. Anselm gives us an answer to this age-old question. Junk. I don't want that. Or, does God exist? A question that has been wondered about since fish grew legs and slowly over time became humans. Junk. I don't want that. Who among us hasn't looked at a drop of dew on a clover and asked themselves, Junk. I don't want that. Don't begin your summary with unnecessary flowery language. Just get to the point. All right. So now we'll give it a shot so you can kind of see how the mechanics of this process work. St. Anselm begins his ontological argument with the claim that God is something in which nothing greater can be conceived. What Anselm is trying to say with this claim is that God is the greatest possible thing that we can conceive or think of. So, Whatever the greatest thing I can think of is, God is greater than this. God's greatness plays an important part in Anselm's argument. In the next premise, Anselm claims, right, and now we move forward with each premise. Now, you can add more or less to your description of each uh, premise, depending on how much you need to motivate the argument. So... From here, you just continue through the premises for each piece of the argument until you get to the conclusion. So we've already gone through God as something in which nothing greater can be conceived. And then you just move your way through two, three, and four, and finally argue for the conclusion, how all the pieces fit together. 
So just to review. When you write your argument summary, remember the principle of charity. You want to present the argument in the clearest and strongest possible form. The summary isn't the time to start pointing out your objections. We're going to have plenty of time to do this later. Don't begin your summary with unnecessarily flowerly language. You want to write your summary in such a way that anyone reading it can understand the argument. And in fact, a great way to test this is after you're done with your summary, hand it to someone that's not in the class. They should be able to read your summary and understand how the argument works. Anyway, that is what we're aiming for.